Welcome to the 11th annual University of Northern Iowa Mini Subo Robot Smackdown. My name is Paul Shand. I'm the interim head of the physics department here at UNI. As always, we look forward to an exciting and action-packed competition. The Mini Sumo Robots never disappoint. At the physics department at the University of Northern Iowa, we are preparing students for the age of robotics and artificial intelligence, using physics as a vehicle for building skills and cultivating creativity. Physics is a problem-solving science. Physics lays the foundation for solving important problems in robotics, artificial intelligence, and many other areas of critical economic importance. Computer programming to solve physics problems is emphasized across the physics curriculum at UNI. Individual courses and undergraduate research provide students with the opportunity to develop and hone their skills in electronics, robotics, instrumentation, and computer control. A new three plus two dual degree agreement with Iowa State University allows students to build their engineering skills on a firm foundation of physics knowledge obtained at UNI. Many physics majors, and other majors as well, take our basic robotics course in which they build and program mini sumo robots, some of which will compete today. A bit of history is appropriate at this time. The idea for the Minisumo competition and the related course came from Randy Dumsey, 1975 UNI physics graduate and founder of New Micros Incorporated. Dumsey guided most of the early implementation with support from physics faculty member Dale Olson and former physics department head Cliff Chauncey. Today, along with robots built by UNI students, we have several fearsome visiting robots. We look forward to even more mayhem than we had last year. Let me take this opportunity to thank Keith Kennedy and Joe Marchesani and the audiovisual production crew, Rick Seeley, who is Instructional Technology Research and Development Coordinator at UNI, Brian Beardsley, and other Marco Union staff members, and everyone else at UNI who has contributed to this event. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Dale Olson, who has spearheaded the planning, organization, and execution of this event from its inception. Let's give a hearty welcome to Dr. Dale Olson. Thank you, Dr. Shan, for that spirited introduction to our event today. <clears throat> I have the pleasure of <clears throat> giving a few additional appreciations, <clears throat> giving thanks to um, additional contributors to our event and introducing our event. And um, Dr. Shand already mentioned the Mocker Union facility manager and our highly professional educational technology production crew. So I'm glad that they were acknowledged. And I, of course, need to acknowledge the contribution of Dr. Shand and the physics department and all persons at UNI who make this wonderful event possible. The students, of course, have a hard time appreciating, being so young, what's involved in putting something like this together. And as we have done this now for the, we are doing this for the 11th year, um, really kind of amazing, I steadily come to appreciate myself better all of the contributions that must come together to create such a really quite amazing event. Um, I want to mention then 
you know, the UNI physics department as I have, but then in particular a person I've not previously acknowledged. We have the world's only live on the internet ship in robotics competition. We believe this is a world's only event. And one of the key persons who doesn't get recognized is the person who helps the builders get their robots that are shipped here from this year Los Alamos, Fort Wayne, Indiana, um, and I'm probably, but, but especially those two at the moment, plus robots being carried in from Peoria, Illinois, for example. Becky Adams, the physics department secretary, really does prove helpful to the builders in making sure that things get shipped properly, received properly, and uh, we continue to improve and become better at that process, which can have lots of twists and turns with robots flying all over the country in their effort to be shipped here. Then, I would then like to especially acknowledge the student builders. We need to appreciate that they are not just doing this for credit, right? This course that students are involved in to build sumo robots and bring them here for sort of their final exam are not required to do this for any course or program requirement. This is a um, free enterprise kind of activity. The course is here, students sign up to it because they choose to. And every year with a little bit of advertising, it populates well. And what it means is I am privileged to lead a course which is enrolled by students that are really here because they want to be in the course doing what, what they do, which is to build a somewhat competitive mini sumo robot. And so then finally, to keep these introductions brief, I'd like to emphasize the creativity that this event represents. For example, we have just to summarize, visiting builders sending one robot, Rick Brooks from Fort Wayne, Indiana, four robots coming from Los Alamos, New Mexico, two from Nathan Burnside, two from Alan Science, and then Rick Dvorsky actually planned on bringing up, as he is here today now from Peoria, Illinois, Mike, Mike Dvorsky, thank you very much. I hope I said your name right the first time. I think I aired a bit, but he had planned on bringing four robots, and the third racing ranking robot from last year, Newman, he has rebuilt completely, but it didn't quite come together. So he has provided, is providing three robots for our competition, and I think it's just fantastic that he does that long drive from Peoria. And then finally, creativity, Bradford Holland is a local electronic artist, and to me, this event is, in a sense, you know, a celebration of creativity. It's now the third year since our course has gone to using the Arduino format microcontroller for the onboard computer for these completely autonomous robotic vehicles. And the Arduino project was aimed at making available electronic an electronic capability not only to engineers like Mike and the other visiting robots, I suspect they're not really engineers, all of them, but they are people that are creative and it makes electronic creativity available to people who are primarily of an artistic nature if they so wish, not just engineers and technology people. So I think that is something that deserves to be highlighted. And then again, our founder was mentioned, I appreciate very much, by Dr. Shan, Randy Dumsey. I just spoke with Randy near Dallas, Texas, on the ranch where he lives this morning, and uh, expressed that I was very appreciative and wanted to make sure he knew about this event, that it continues forward long after he was serving as its founder. So there is my heartfelt appreciation to everyone that I can think of, and I hope I haven't left any important contributor out. I think we're ready. I'll turn the event over, then I will introduce our MC, 
for this event. Also, Keith Kennedy, also a member of the UNI EdTech, ed I'll say, Educational Technology Program. Keith, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Dale. Thank you. All right, so yes, we'd like to say a, a, a nice welcome to Randy, who's hopefully watching us on, on the internet. We are broadcasting this live on the internet all across the world. We get people watching from everywhere. We get to look at some of the stats, and we get people as far away as Japan watching this event. So that's uh, exciting. All right, Should we, let's check out who we have coming up first. Our first round is gonna start off with Two robots called Crystal and Mystery, and uh, Chrissy Crystal. Nielsen. Yeah, Chrissy Nielsen. Yeah, and Ethan Hunter. I'll just mention as they're bringing their robots to the arena. Ethan is the student teaching assistant in the in the Mini Sumo Robotics course, and has provided yeoman service. And he is the person that I neglected to give appreciation to, and I'm doing that right now. He has been a mainstay in getting students to build these robots successfully and give them the technical support they need. All right, and so when we do this e each year, uh, there's a little formality involved. Uh, when you come up with your robot, you face each other and you bow. <laughs> and then you can place your robots. You have to be behind the line on the disc. And then we, uh, we won't do it just yet, guys, so hold on. We'll say three, two, one, go. And then you'll press the button on your robot. The contestants will step back two or three steps from the ring so that they don't interfere with the robot. And uh, then we'll see what the robots do. Does that sound about right, Dale? That sounds great. And do we have judges today? I'm, how are we doing that? I'm going to press into service any student who's nearby to be okay. the assistant judge. I am going to be the chief judge. OK and we'll see if we have the support we need. But Bradford Holland, for example, is here. Mike Dvorsky is here, and we'll press them into service if we need some help. <laughs> All right, that sounds great. So, contestants, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. And then there is a delay to give us time to step back, and then the robots try to push each other out of the ring. There we go. Crystal is our first winner. All right, so Yuko to Crystal. <clears throat> and this is a two out of three here, so uh, we'll, we'll do it one more time. Go ahead and place your robots. And here we go. Three, two, one, go. Sometimes there's a little strategy on where you place the robots, and Crystal takes all right. that one again. So then this permits me to request of all competitors at the end, please come to the judge's table to verify that I do correctly enter the score. And we're using a real nice online bracket system. Okay. It's made this go real well. Dale will enter the winner. Now, I have selected the winner, and I have not Let's see, I have to shrink it, I guess. Okay, as uh, Dale is doing that, uh, the next up would be Zuman and Dabo. No, no, just give me a moment here, we're learning. Zuman and Dabo, come on down. That there would be go. round two, you can get your bots ready. And uh, All right. if the builder's not here, we'll have some of the other students help with the uh, activation of the robot. Uh, not every robot starts the same, so sometimes there's some instruction that's uh, needed to start the robots. So we're uh, taking a look at that here. So Mike Dvorsky will operate the first of the three robots that he brought along. This is Zuman. This is a Zumo robot pro as provided as a kit by Palalu. And we've had two students start and work, make good progress on a similar kit. So they're going to be very interested in seeing Mike's robot zoom on. Debo is built by Andrew Black, who resides in Northern Ireland. And, and tell us what Debo means again. 
Dumb as a box of hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I didn't know that till this year, and this, this robot's been here before. Yes. Yeah. He provides it so students have a fair challenge, you might say. Okay. Uh, did we do the formality? I must have missed that. <laughs> Can you guys bow, please? Thank you. And then uh, go ahead. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. You got some nice LEDs on there. Oh, Debo go, Dabo goes out. You call Zuman. Zuma's a pretty little speedy robot there. Go ahead and place your bots back down when you're ready. Okay, three, two, one, go. Step back, you get a good picture of that. Great. Oh! Remarkable. Zoom in. Back right off the, back so right off the disc. So that's a Yuko Dable. Right. One each. Go ahead and place your bots. And here we go. Three, two, one, go. This will decide this, this heat. And oh, there goes Dabo. There, Zuman made it look easy. Yep. But it's not easy to get a <laughs> program to work like that. Very Congratulations. Impressive. If you guys want to step over here to Dale's table, he'll make sure he yep. gets it yes, correct. Take a look. But I think uh, we have Students and, and all the contestants spend many hours uh, and programming. And these, these robots, they, it looks easy, it. but it takes, takes many hours to perfect the programming. Okay, next up, we have, I want to say this wrong probably again, uh, Oksana and Junkbot 2. Oksana and Junkbot 2. Again, Bradford Holland is present. Junkbot 2 is his robot. And Oksana is from I'm, Corey. I'm curious, Brad, Bradford, is your robot having opponent sensors now? Is it? Yeah. It does have opponent sensors, so it's, it's, it's a significant step up from the first year. Very good. Thank you. And Corey Valaika, did I say that right? <clears throat> All right. So go ahead and bow. And place your bots on the disc. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Now, these bots are not all the same. These two are, in general, look kind of the same, but Junkbot's got some extra shrouding on it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there's Oksana touched out first. So Junkbot 2 gets... So that's a Zuk Yuko to Junkbot 2? Do I Cor see that correctly? Correct, yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Contestants will place their bots again. And here we go. Three, two, one, go. And we wait the time. There they go. Oh, they missed each other. Oh. <laughs> that one goes to Oksana. So you call Akana. One for each. Here's the deciding round. Ready. Three, two, one, go. And you call and match to Okana. If you would please approach the judges' table for a moment. Okay, next you up we have see. Goo and Danny. Goo and Danny. Okay, so I've got to say. Let's see what kind of. Goo is, uh, was made by Ethan Hunter and Danny by Riley Morgan. Riley is a physics major from. Briar, Washington, and Ethan is from Jessup, Iowa, and is a computer science major. All right. And Chrissy, ne Chrissy Nielsen will operate Danny because Riley has a class at this moment. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll see Riley later. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Goo and Danny. 
And Goo is the winner of that one. Got it up right behind Danny. Okay, go ahead and place the bots. Goo is a completely new robot this year by Ethan Hunter. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh. Danny put goo uh, on its so, back. Yeah, but goo is on its still back. Still trying. And Danny needs to find goo. Yeah. Uh, ships Dan passing in the night. Danny's just kind of milling around. <laughs> I'm going to start a timer. Okay. Okay, we'll let these kinds of things go for 20 seconds, and then we'll have to make a judge's decision whether being more aggressive, uh, I, I guess we'd have to say Danny is in some sense more aggressive moving across the arena. Yeah. So They're pretty much doing the same thing over and over here. Yeah. Would we say we would call this one assistant judge, Keith? You're I, I think so. They're just going to keep, keep I'm gonna, going. I'm going to assign a Yuko to Danny on this okay. one because Danny had an advantage. Yeah, Danny did, did have the advantage. Put, you, put goo on its All back. Right, so it's a Yuko each. This will be the deciding event. <laughs> okay, ready. Three, two, one, go. Ooh, head to head. Oh, Danny ah. did it again. I will restart the timer. <laughs> and Goo just doesn't know what to do on its back. That's 10 seconds. We'll give another 10 seconds and presumably we'll be on our way. I don't think Goo's going to succeed in getting up off the back, so maybe it's time to just, oh, that's a change. You, stranger things have happened, right? It might, yep. it might give a smack to Danny on the back, but all right. So I'm going to say this is a Yuko to Danny. Yep. And the match goes to Danny. Match to Danny. Simply for being able to get under a scoop and tip up. So please approach the judges' table just for a moment. Okay, up next we have Jerry and Tiger. Okay. Uh, Jerry. Okay. So. Trevor Dunt is the uh, creator of Jerry. He's a physics major from Cedar Falls, Iowa. And then oh, Tiger, oh. The winner Matthew Jung Jungy, is also a physics major from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Go ahead and bow, gentlemen. We'll make sure Dale is ready to go here. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. We bowed. Okay. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> Ooh, now, like I said, there we go. Tiger is out. Not every bot is the same. Jerry's got some so what, uh, little... What is the outcome? I could not see oh, the arena. Uh, Tiger got pushed out, correct? Okay, yes, so Jerry is the winner. It's a Yuko to Jerry. Yep. Okay, go ahead and place your bots. And here we go. Three, two, one, go. Jerry has like a plate that comes down. Whoa, that's pretty like a big spatula. Oh. This is a situation. Oh, oh. Jerry has disintegrated and has been pushed off the disc. So that's a Yuko to Tiger. Yes. And we did lose a wheel, Lots sort of, of incidentally. It wasn't central to the event, but as Tiger, I'm sorry, as Jerry slid off the side, he also lost a wheel. So that's a Yuko to Tiger. So we have a one and one situation. Go ahead and place your bots. All right, three, two, one, go. Oh, oh that's Jerry a, is the winner on that one. That is match and round and match yep. to Tiger. Two Yukos. 
And next up, we have Ragnar and Wally. No, no, just a second. No. Just the other way. Jerry. Oh, sorry. Match and round to Jerry. Jerry, yes. So, thank you. There we go. Ragnar and Wally will be up next. Ragnar was built by Aaron Anderson, physics major, for physics for teaching from Dallas Center, Iowa. And Wally was created by Jacob Johnson, who's a movement and sci exercise science major from Wasilla, Alaska. The home of Sarah Palin, we can't help but notice. All right, gentlemen, place your bots on the disc. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Head to head. Okay, I am going to start a timer. Uh, <laughs> Ra Ragnar's very dangerously close uh, to the edge. I guess I'm going to restart. Nothing. And Ragnar's out. Okay. So Wally with the win. That one. As soon as you're ready, guys, go ahead and place your bots. Okay. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> Sometimes placement matters. Sometimes placement doesn't matter. About the same effect. Yep, Wally with the win again. So Wally's pushing, perhaps, just a little more yep. effectively. Yep. May have a bit of a... So that was ma match and round yep. to Wally. Wally. Wally seemed to have a little bit better traction. And I think that's going to... Let's see if the down... It'll work. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next one is Cutie, Cutie and Akbar. Cutie Pie. Oh, Cutie Pie. I'm sorry. Cutie Pie. That, I'll get it. Nate Nelson built Cutie Pie, and he's an all-science teaching major in, from Iowa City. And Akbar Joseph Christensen is a manufa max manufacturing with a focus in metal casting from Waterloo, Iowa. We might meant, let's see, um, it's Joe Christensen. Yep. Christensen. Chris Joe has a health problem that came up markedly in the last two weeks. He's in Minnesota okay. at the Mayo Clinic today. So okay. Well, Ethan Hunter will operate Akbar. Okay. Interesting robot. Sort of a matador style robot. All right, guys. Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Like I said, not every... Notice the flag yep. on Akbar. Uh-huh. So now... Cutie Pie did not go for that too well. Cutie Pie fell for it, but escaped bit. anyway. Yep. So Cutie yeah, went, Pie went, had some... Went for it and then went right around. overcome the side attack. So the strategy worked, but he, his robot, which he, of course, having some health problems the last two weeks, couldn't completely perfect, was effective. Okay, guys. Are you guys ready? Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> See if Cutie Pie falls for it again. No. Nope. Nope, a little oh, oh, Cutie Pie is off. So this time, match to Akbar. Yep. His flag did not play a role, but he pushed a little more effectively. So yep, kind of got under the, underneath that little ramp there. Yeah. Okay. Little. Three, two, one, <clears throat> go. <clears throat> Here's our deciding match. All right. Cutie Pie. Cutie Pie is our Ma winner. M Round and match. So let's check Cutie Pie. Yep. And we'll. 
doesn't work. There we go. Coming up next, we have Hal and Bird. Oh. Hal and Bird. Hal is uh, created by Colton oh, right. Warnke. That's He's a physics major like. from Clarion, Iowa. And Bird is created by Henry Brewer. Uh, he's a biology major from Iowa Falls, Iowa. Another uh, unique design. All right, gentlemen, place your bots. And we'll go on three. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Bird has a... Uh-oh. Um, Hal is not responding. Maybe we, maybe we should do a redo. I don't know. Did you get your button pressed, Colton? It did press? Yeah. It, did it blink and do the things that it... Because it did not move, right? Did not move. Um, I, I think, Colton, you call it. If you think there was just like... You didn't get a good fair start, we'll do a do-over. But if you really had a firm press on the button... Okay, I think let's call that a do-over. I don't think okay. we need, we want to... Let's do it again. Place your bots. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. There we go. Now they're both moving. Bird has a big arm. Bird has a lance, a but lance. the lance deflected or didn't quite hit the target, so that's... That round goes to, goes to Hal. Hal. Yep. You go to Hal. Okay, go Warren ahead and place, right. place your it box. Goes. I, I have to be careful how I speak when we have a robot named Hal. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, three, two, one, go. <laughs> yeah, Hal, Hal might turn on us. Ah. Whoa, uh, Bird. I don't, I th I'm sorry, but I think Bird touched the ground before Hal. I think I don't the know. wheel, I, I saw it was right on this side and Bird's yeah. wheel dropped down onto the ground, but I'm willing to, if we're unclear, if not everyone is agreement, we'll just do over, okay? It was so close, I couldn't call that one. You wanna, okay, if we don't have two judges agreeing, we'd better yeah. just have a do over. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Wow. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's Yuko to Bird. Bird, yes. And do you have a sensor on the end of that lance, or what is on the end of that? Proximity sensor on the end of the lance. Okay. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. They're locked up pretty good there. Starting to look like they're gonna start to repeat. I'll do a timer, but let's watch for any changes. I think it's changing. I think they're getting closer to the edge. Maybe not now. Yeah, they are moving around. They're, yeah, they're moving. Hal is out. Hal touched. I, okay. Yep. All right. So that'll be... How's Round that? and match to Bird. To Bird. Yoko yep. to Bird. Match to Bird. And we progress. Next up is Seamus and Robot. Shame it. Seamus. I'm sorry. And Robot 13, you said, is not good, not participating today? Is that correct? I'm sorry? Robot 13 is not participating? Ah, yes. This is a buy. So right now, let me enter the scores. Um, so this will be, I'll have to enter 
two yukos for Seamus and the match goes to Seamus. I'll just tell the story of what happened to the other robot. It's somewhat interesting. Mike Odland is an honors chemistry major and he built a robot last year that was very creative and he was excited to build another robot this year. He and his father have a 3D printer at, at their home, which I don't know, it might be on the form, but they did build a chassis with a 3D printer, but it was their first effort and the chassis disintegrated upon, <laughs> upon use. And so oh. uh, Mike is gonna write a paper on what he recommends if we wanna make 3D printer chassis of wi more widely available in our course for other students. So with that by Ron Petmeyer, Spot uh, will advance, and Ron is a uh, BA computer science major uh, from Burlington, Iowa. All right, and then we move on to the next round. Is Losers round one. We want to work all the way down to round one, so Looks that's like Debo and Junkbot. Debo and Junkbot two. And Debo again is Andrew Black's robot. He's from Northern Ireland. That's definitely a ship in. Okay, and Junkbot 2 is Bradford Howland. He's from Cedar Falls. Should mention, Debo was brought here actually by Mike Dvorsky, so he did bring four robots. Yep. He does this for his friend, Andrew Black. Okay, here we go, guys. Ready? Three. Two, one, go. Uh oh. Ah, uh, Debo got stalled out on the edge. He's a sitting target, a sitting duck. Uh, but somehow, Junkbot's opponent sensors aren't quite firing. They need to. I, I think they locked uh -oh. in. There he goes. Junk bot takes Bradford, that. I think you have an LED that lights when your opponent sensors are seeing something. I could see the, uh, the LED blinking. <clears throat> All right, here we go again. Three, two, one, go. As we see here, some different strategy. Just never know where you want to place them on the board. And Junkbot proves to have superior pushing power. Yeah. There, there we it go. goes. So, that one round, goes to Junkbot. Round and match to Junkbot. And I think I have this entered correctly, so thank you. Well, that concludes our first round. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. So, we will move on to our second round. And uh, the top. But the list of the, for the second round is El Matador and Crystal. I'm checking my email. Um, I emailed Alan Science to alert him that his robot, which was the winner of the event last year, uh, Ethan, if you could just stop for, let's see, we're not starting with, what are we starting with in round? Round two, El Matador? Yeah, and and Crystal. Just, we have to hold up for a moment. Okay. Um, is Ethan here? We have a possible fix. We have a technical problem with El Matador, and we want to do the technical fix if we can. So if you could wait, Colton, just for a minute, and maybe bring the robot over. We'll just have a little pause. Okay. It might be... If, if they, Alan Sines, the builder, is saying by email that possibly it's a little too late to do what needs to be done. Um, yeah, I think we're just, we'll, we'll try it the way it is. I think it is too late to do the, the reset that he mentions. We would, so I think we'll, we'll try and see what happens. Okay. And maybe we can get it fixed before the next time that El Matador comes up. Okay. This is double elimination. And Alan Sines, El Matador, is from Los Alamos, New Mexico. And uh, Crystal is 
Chrissy Nielsen, and she's a physics major from Dyke, Iowa. So here we go. Ready? Three, two, one, go. El Matador is a little different. Got some flags flying around. Whoa! And El, El Matador... Uh, that was more of an assault, I think. So Matador will take that one. Dale? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm emailing okay. Alan Sines at this moment. Okay. So El Matador, first one. Are you guys ready? Three, two, one, go. El Matador does not... Oh, El Matador is off the board. I'm sorry I didn't get to see that. Yes. I'm catching up. But <laughs> We have uh, a win wow, for each in. right now. So the fastest is not always... Does not always win. So okay. we have one Yuko each catching one up? One each, yes. Okay. Okay, go ahead and place your bots. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Those flags go flying. Ah, uh, El Matador pushes Crystal right off. I don't think we have to worry about El Matador anymore. <laughs> no. All <laughs> Looks right. Looks like he's doing so just fine. Um, match, I'm sorry, round and match to El Matador. Yep. Next up we have Zuman and okay. Oksana. So now, little interest note, Corey Velika will compete against Mike Dvorsky's Palalu Zumo robot, style robot, and actually Corey was working on a project making a Zumo robot during the semester. Okay. We haven't advanced it quite as far as Mike's. We're really happy to see Zuman here, especially because we're trying to learn about such robots. And here we go. Three, two, one, go. We have a robot with tracks and one with wheels. Oh. Uh, Zoom in, gets the Yuko. Yuko Zoom in. Yep. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. He has a great whip around the back. Yeah. Move. Moves, moves around you real swiftly right need a good right side sensor if you're going to, and yep. a good rear sensor. So That was good. Round good and match to Zuman. Yep. Next, next up is Orthos and Danny. Orthos and Danny. So another Mike Dvorsky robot, Orthos, has been a pretty fearsome competitor in the past, has a very large scoop. Orthos means perpendicular, orthogonal. The robot starts pointing vertically upward into the air. There's no height limit in mini sumo robotics. Okay. Only a ground footprint limit. And here we go. Ready? Three, two, one, go. And Danny gets the edge there. Okay. <clears throat> Chrissy Nielsen's robot. Oh, uh, Riley Morgan's robot, right? Danny, operated Danny. by Chrissy Nielsen, gets yep. a Yuko. Yes. Okay, guys, ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, so it's one Yuko for Orthos, so it's one Yuko each. One each, here we go. <clears throat> Ready? 
Three, two, one, go. Ah, I think Orthos got a late start, but that, I yep. think. Yep. And Orthos is out. All right, so you call to Danny. Danny. Yep, Danny. So round and match to Danny. Okay, the next bots up are Ghost and Jerry. Ghost and Jerry. Jerry being the robot with the large, heavy metal scoop that flops down on start. Ghost being Alan Cyan's other visiting robot from Los Alamos, New Mexico. Okay. So we have a local versus a ship in. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. Bow, thank you. Place your bots. Ghost is another matator. Yep. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Notice the flags pop up on start, what? so uh, we lost a battery. We yeah. lost a battery. Who? That would be. Is it, that's a uh, distraction oh, okay. device. It oh, looks like. Oh, it's a de decorative, <laughs> decorative component. I, I'm not sure that was effective that time, but uh, here Yuko, we go, guys. You call ghost. Three, two, one, go. Oh, we got a little fast on that one. Let's try that one again. We need to think about how that happened. If we could stop for a moment, just Ethan, could you explain why you think Ghost started so early? Okay, it was a, just a, a, an unfortunate small technical error. Okay. okay, you guys ready? Three, two, one, go. All right, another move around the side and attack yep. from the side or rear maneuver. That so, goes to ghost. So round and match to ghost. Ghost gets Correct. the victory. Next up, we have Artemis and Wally. Artemis and Wally. Artemis by Nathan Burnside, Los Alamos took second place last year and Wally is made by Jacob Johnson <clears throat> if you're just coming into the mocker union and you're wondering what we're doing down here come on down and take a look this is the mini sumo robots Smackdown 2016 come on down you can take a look the previous event and some of the others, uh, previous events show why you talked about fearsome shipped in robots. They yeah. really move fast. Yeah, those are <laughs> fast ones. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? Three, two, one, go. So yeah. that would be Yuko to Artemis, the yes. way I. Those are some aggressive bots. I understand it. Is Wally okay there? <laughs> okay. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. That's just a pushing match. Yep. So Artemis has got some good traction. Match and round to Artemis. Okay, as we move on to the next round here, we have Expert and Cutie Pie. Expert and Cutie Pie. Expert comes now possibly for the sixth or seventh time in a row. He has won the match three times in our, in our might call it, middle years. And that's Rick Brooks. And we really appreciate Rick being patient. I made my only known scoring error in this event in, I believe, the first shipping of Expert, and he didn't win 
that time when likely uh -huh. he would have if I hadn't made the scoring error. And Rick Brooks overlooked that and kept sending his robot. So I and really Rick, appreciate that. Rick is shipping his bot in from Fort Wayne, Indiana. <laughs> and Cutie Pie is a local. Okay, here we go, guys. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Another low bot versus a bigger bot. Oh. There you see. Another whip around the back. Yep. Circle and attack from the rear. So you need a rear sensor to be able to defeat that. Yeah, it looks like a good tactic there. We'll place the bots again. Ready, guys? Three, two, one, go. Ah. Oh, Cutie Pie has Cutie battled Cutie Pie back. recovered. That's a, that was an impressive move. Yeah. I don't know. Cutie Pie, I don't think, has a rear sensor. Nate, do you have it? Maybe you do. You did add a rear sensor, so that, that made the difference. He managed to then do a spin move. Yeah, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Oh, there yeah. he goes, cutie pie out. And that time, I think, expert attacked from the front, did yep. he not? He just had enough pushing power. Yep. So in, that, in this case, then, the round goes to expert. Expert, yep. And the match goes to expert. Next up, Newman and Bird. Newman is uh, Mike Dvorsky bot. Bird is... Oh, Newman is not running today. I'm sorry? Newman is not running today, so yeah, we have a you, bye. This is a bye. This is the robot, Newman, that Mike Dvorsky brought last year. It took third place, but he's rebuilt it completely and couldn't quite finish okay. that difficult task. So I will enter a, let me enter two, two Yukos for Bird and award the match to Bird. Okay, so that brings us then to Apollo and Seamus. Apollo and Seamus. <laughs> Okay, guys, go ahead and place your bots. And here we go. Three, two, one, go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Apollo seems to be unresponsive. Um, yeah, that was a computer reset is my interpretation. And um, if we wipe the robot's wheels, um, I don't, if they're a little bit moist, they sometimes will drain the electrostatic charge that can build up. It's a f curious physics, like r walking across a carpet, rubbing your feet, ah. and it happens. And Some we periodically, have, partly for that reason, get computer resets, I believe. Uh -huh. We certainly have had it with our own robots and could prove that that was the cause. <clears throat> okay. So does that win then go to Seamus? I think so. You're right. Yep. yep. There Luke we go. go to Seamus. Okay, guys. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Let's see if Apollo can come back. Oh, oh. did the same thing. Yeah. Nathan Feldman, we've tried to, I'll try to contact Nathan Burnside by email and see if he can give us a tip. But I think, I think that Apollo's dead on the... Arena, he's a brick, so he has lost, and we will give the Yuko to Seamus, and we'll see if we can do anything to help out Apollo in terms of technical re repair. So Sounds this good. is the match to Seamus. Yep. Irish name.
That's the end of round two from the winner's bracket. We now go down to the loser's round two. And Apollo and Mystery is up. They are up next. <coughs> Apollo and Mystery. I'll point out, this is a new happening in these competitions. We've never directly communicated with builders during the competition before. Okay, guys, you ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh. I'd better get back to this match. If this is, oh, this is, unfortunately, it's Apollo that came up first, so that's, we almost should have switched him down to a lower place, but it's okay, we'll continue. So, so that one is a Yuko to Mystery, do correct. I have that right? Yes. All right, it's Here we a little go. unfortunate the way it worked out. Yep, three, two, one, go. Ah. Again, same result. Looks like Apollo is right, dead. So that that's dead on the arena. And so, whoops, I've got to give this right. That's a Yuko to mystery. Another Yuko to mystery. So that's match and that's round and match yep. to mystery. And so we submit that. And I guess that is the end for Apollo, who was very high-ranking robot last year. Yep. Maybe Nathan can give us a comment on that. It's unfortunate the way it worked out. But. So up next is Newman and Junkbot 2. Newman and Junkbot 2. That's right, Newman is not running, so that is a bye round. So Junkbot 2 will advance in the loser's bracket. And our next two bots will be Cutie Pie and Goo. Cutie Pie and Goo. <sighs> Hold on guys, we're gonna, we're gonna update the bracket before we run this one here. You want me to check that out? Just a second, you're right. Because we had a, did we had a buy? Is that what? Yeah, happened? we have a buy because Newman's not okay. Functional. Thank you. So I'm trying to trying to communicate. May not be able to get it done, but let's get this bracket updated. Yeah. So, so we advance Junkbot two. Okay. So here we go. Junkbot two is moving forward. So two Yukos and the match to Junkbot two, and away we go. Okay, guys, bow and place your bots. <coughs> and here we go. Three, two, one, go. This is Cutie Pie and Goo. So here Goo had a little better push. And oh. still, still Cutie, Cutie Pie, Pie evaded. Did yeah. a nice little turnaround there. Yeah, that is a good move. Okay, go ahead and place your bots again. Ready, three, two, one, go. Oh, Cutie Pie looks pretty slow. And there goes a wheel. Slow and lame. We do have a, have a do si -do, <laughs> and if that wheel would fall off, that would not be good for Cutie Pie because any significant component that comes off a robot and gets pushed off the edge counts as a loss. Right now, though, we've got a, 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 a bumped a wheel, so I'm going to say that changed. I'm not starting the timer yet. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, we're moving around. Oh, oh, there, there went goes. the wheel. <laughs> That's a pretty unusual event that we had there. So unusual way for the competition to spin out. So, so that would be a Yuko for Goo. 
and it's one and one. And I don't know if, if Nate, if you want to take a time out and put a wheel screw in, but that would have been a good... <laughs> We don't have any, so okay. Okay. We don't have that choice right now. Chewing gum, tape. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, hold on one second. Oh, our batteries. Oh. Batteries. They batteries seemed a little are slow. Much gone. It ha okay, a smoke disqualifies. Ooh. Smoke disqualifies. Yes. We don't, uh, we don't have to enforce that rule if we want to be flexible. But technically, in the rules, if you read that... I, now, Mike Dvorsky. In the Seattle rules, smoke disqualifies robot. What do you think? We follow the central Illinois rules. Uh, you would not. Okay, you wouldn't be quite as strict as Seattle. All Let's right. give it a whirl, see what happens. <laughs> yeah, okay. That, that, I don't recall that we've had smoke on the arena in a previous I have event. never seen smoke, no. Nope. You really think you saw smoke? I think something shorted. I think that the smoke turned out to be significant and the robot has disqualified itself. Okay. It it's a, it's a non-starting robot right now. I think a joint, some solder joint actually melted. There was a short. Probably a servo burned out. So then we uh, advance goo, it looks like. I will give a... You go to Goo, and I will give the match to Goo, Goo, built by Nathan, by Ethan, sorry, Ethan Hunter. There we go. Next up is Wally and Tiger. Wally and Tiger. Uh, Matt Jungie built Jacob Tiger. Jacob Spot. And Jacob Johnson from Wasilla, Alaska, built Wally. -E. And Matthew Jungie? Matthew, incidentally, is a member of the UNI golf team. Is that correct? I don't want to say you are when you're not, but I believe <laughs> you are. <clears throat> and when you're ready, you can go ahead and bow. And go ahead and place your bots. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> Wally and Tiger, two similar bots, and Wally gets the advantage. Wally there. had his eye on the tiger. <laughs> oh. That's a good one, Dale. All right, place your bots. Here we go again. Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh. yes. Wally again. Tiger turned around and. Yeah. Ooh. That goes to Wally. And we can speculate later on why Tiger made that unfortunate spin move. He was seeing something. Next up is Jerry and Ragnar. All right, I have given the previous match to Wally. Correct, yes. Jerry and Ragnar are up next. Jerry is a local bot. With Trevor the Hunt. large steel drop-down scoop, which is working pretty well for him. Yep. And I'll mention, builder of Ragnar, I believe, Aaron Anderson received the award for outstanding accomplishment in the course first year projects in physics. Great. Awesome. Okay, guys, place your bots. And here we go. Three, two, one, go. Uh, 
odd one goes. Well, but 13 is not here. Yeah. So she gets and five. Jerry That's will right. take that one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, you call to Jerry. Jerry not only has that big scoop, but it's got the little distraction thing there on the top. What do you call that? Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Wow, that scoop really worked. Yep, there we go. So you call, that gives the round and then the match, the round and then the match to Jerry. Jerry's the winner. And we progress to the next Orthos and Akbar. Match. Orthos and Akbar up next. Mike and Joseph's bots. We have two novel robots. Orthos being the vertical robot, flop down after the start. Akbar with its distracting flag, but Akbar starts at right angles to the opponent and tr attempts to get the opponent to attack the flag and then just push straight ahead. He had a mirror to uh -oh. deflect attention, but because he had very little time, the mirror was so vigorous it would fall off as it snapped down into ah. place. Very creative. <coughs> okay, guys, you ready? Okay. Yep, I'm watching you. <clears throat> okay, three, two, one, go. It worked to some extent. Akbar is ah. off. So he kind of got confused on the edge. Akbar became slightly confused, sitting right on top of the white line, but it was very interesting the way it developed, and his flag did work to some extent, but you go to Orthos. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. I think, oh. I think Akbar needs a little work on his sensors, and that yeah. was just lack of time for Joseph, who yep. made a... So Orthos gets that one. Okay, so that is round and now match to Orthos, and that might be the end of the competition for... Akbar. I think that's yep. Akbar's second loss, uh, although I'm not... Yeah, we are in the yeah, loser we bracket. are in the loser's yes. round. So any robot that loses now is done for the day. Next up is Oksana and Hal. <clears throat> Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Two very similar robots. Pushing match. So Hal had And Hal decided to just not play that one. Xana gets that one. All right, so it's going to be. Uh oh. Hold on, guys. Try again. So that's a Yuko to Okana. You call to Okana. Yep. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh, Hal fights back. That one goes to Hal. So Hal had very good pushing power. Yep. Got some good traction there. So you call to Hal. It's one and one. And here we go. Three, two, one, go. Oh, is Hal off? No. Oh, lost part. 
son. Uh, drop that the one is that goes to hell. What component was lost, if I may inquire, before? Okay, so we lost a weight, but it didn't get pushed off, so that wasn't the deciding thing, right? But, but, it, but it did that, go just off. Just stay here, gentlemen, because this one I, I need a little help on. It was kind of wild. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is the second Yuko to Hal, right? For Hal, yes. Okay, so we'll update that. That was quite an interesting match. And just a second, Colton, just hang on for a minute. I'm going to give the, the match to Hal. Colton Warnke, and we will then progress, and you will continue forward in the losers round. Okay, All <laughs> he's, right. he's doing a little dance <laughs> here. <laughs> Next up, we have Crystal, and, and Robot Corey, 13 is not playing today. So, okay, so I, we have a buy. We have a buy here me. also. Okay, yes. so Crystal, I'll do this process. Crystal gets the win Crystal on this one. Will get Crystal, I will get, of uh, Chrissy Nielsen, will get two Yukos and will be awarded the match. And All right. we go. And we move back up to the top of the bracket to round three. Round three winner's bracket is El Matador and Zuman. All right, no. this could prove interesting. Zumo is a ver fairly speedy. Ro Zuman is a fairly speedy robot, but El Matador is likely even faster. <laughs> we'll see if the flags matter. Zuman has that little curved hook move. All right, guys. Wow, there you go. Place your bots. <coughs> and here we go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Whoa. A matador went off the edge. He kind of gave a hit to the side, I think. That yeah. that, that sort of... Looks I like it went, say tried to do its around the back move, but it was too close to the edge. Okay, so Yuko, is in a moment, I have to... Huh. You go to Zuman. All right, Yuko to Zuman. Right. Here we go, guys. Three, two, one, go. Oh. Uh -huh. Somehow El Matador wasn't able to see, in a sense, spun by and didn't attack. So a second, a second, you go to zoom in. Yep. And the match goes to zoom in. Next up, Danny and Ghost. Danny and Ghost. Danny, again, is built by Riley Morgan. And Ghost, Ghost from Los Alamos, Alan Sines. All right, go ahead and bow and place the bots. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Whoa! That was a dan a crushing blow, you yeah. might say. Something came Something off. Was came it? Off. What is it? Wait. A weight came off. So you could you could ask for a moment to re glue it, but maybe it's not going to be a critical component. Maybe just take the weight and set it aside. Drop it on a table. I think pr probably that's the best pr procedure at this point. Okay. So, but the Yuko goes to ghost. Yes. Ready, three, two, one, go. Ghost with one Yuko, Danny with zero, yep. and Danny gets pushed off first again. There so. was a little bit of a hook move there, but that wasn't the main part of the tactic. It was just <laughs> straight on attack. Yeah. All right. So second Yuko. Ghost has some power there. 
the match goes to Ghost. All right, next up we have Artemis and Expert. Artemis and Expert. Another Las, Los Alamos with bot with Artemis. Expert from Fort Wayne, Indiana, built by Rick Brooks. So these are robots, neither of whom has yet lost. Right. And one will move to the lost once round. I don't like to call it the losers round because they haven't lost. They could still right. win everything, even if they lose this event, this match. <clears throat> So tell us what the, what the remote is for. Ah, to stop it in case it gets wild and... <laughs> just. This is a new feature that Nathan Burnside provided. He has a remote stop. Last year, we were chasing his robots all over the Mocker Union after yeah. the event. <laughs> I think one of them went underneath the uh, sheet we have on the floor, too. Yeah. Okay, guys, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Expert in Artemis. Two low, fast robots. Ah, they are both very fast, but Artemis has more push power. Yep. So Artemis came in second last year. You can see why. Has very powerful motors. Artemis gets the Yuko on that one. So the Yuko, in this case, goes to Artemis. Yeah. And here we go. Three, two, one, go. Yep. Same thing. That one is just yep. mash the other robot. And the, the remote stop works wonderfully. Thank you, Nathan Burnside, for providing the remote That's start, awesome. stop. It turns out it's also a remote start. And we had some interesting happenings when we didn't realize that during the practice rounds. But I will give this event to this match to Artemis. Next up, we have Bird and Seamus. Bird and Seamus. Two student robots have progressed to compete against each other. Henry Brewer and Ron Pepmeyer. And this is a creativity thing. Henry is a biology student at UNI. And Great. Three times a young woman from biology has won the student side of the competition. And now Henry is representing biology. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> oh, there it okay. goes. Bird so is off. That is a Yuko to Bird. I might add... No. Seamus. Oh, I'm sorry. To Seamus. Yeah. I knew that and misspoke. Yeah. There you go. Ron Pepmeyer is a computer science major, and I've regarded him as being a leader in our effort to upgrade our code. He has a well-censored, instrumented, and coded robot. I could explain details, but he's doing some things we were not able to do before. Great. Okay, guys. Go ahead and place your bots. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Uh -huh. Aha, so there the, the lance may have made a difference. I'm not yep. sure, but it may have. I think so. All right, so the, the Yuko now to Bird, built by Bird. Henry Brewer, and it's one Yuko each. As soon as you guys are ready, go ahead and place the bots. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. One each. This will decide it. And then Seamus gets the advantage. All right. So a Yuko to Seamus. Ron, please mention, do you have side sensors on your robot? No. Just a rear. You do have a rear sensor, right? Okay. Okay. So if that match goes to Seamus. Correct. And that moves us down to the loser round number three here with Mystery and Junkbot 2. 
Mystery and Junkbot 2. Mystery again was built by Ethan Hunter. Junkbot 2 by Bradford Holland. This is Mystery's second time in the competition. Mystery ranked quite highly last year when Ethan Hunter was a student in this course. Oh, I'm sorry. That was, that, my bad. Mystery is the new role, but I said it backwards earlier, Ethan. Okay, go ahead and place your bots, gentlemen. And here we go. Three, two, one, go. Okay. There we go. Mystery gets the advantage there. So Mystery was not blind. <laughs> he could see the opponent. And it's a Yuko to Mystery. <laughs> okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> has good push. Mystery has good ooh, pushing ooh. power. I think that um, Junkbot may have gone dead on the arena at the last moment. Bradford, do you agree? It seemed like it stopped right on... Yeah, oh, it did, it did start it, it up did again. It did start up again, yes. Okay. All right. But then the, the second round and the match will go to Mystery. Yes. And... Thank you. I guess now, Junkbot, that's your first loss. No, that's your second loss. So I think then Junkbot is, will exit the yes. competition. Bradford, thank you very much for coming and bringing Junkbot. That brings us to our next round with Goo and Wally. <coughs> Goo and Wally. We have some celebrity visitors I can recognize around the side, but I don't think I'll embarrass them by mentioning their name. Former students in this course, and people have provided a lot of service to the department. Sure. So we could be bragging on them a little bit, but we'll continue forward. Okay. <clears throat> Placing the bots and Goo and Wally. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Head to head, Wally with a little traction advantage there. And Wally continues to have good traction. Yes. And Goo, if I have this right, Goo is the newer robot. Is it, no? Goo is the older robot. Mystery is the newer robot. Okay. I mean, I'm an, I, I can see we need a little scheme to keep that straight for me. Okay. Here we go. Three. Two, one, go. There you go, head to head again. Wally with the traction. Yep. Yeah. Pushes goo right out. All right. So the second Yuko to Wally, the match to Wally. And I think that has been correctly entered. And we say goodbye to goo. Next up is Jerry and Orthos. Jerry and Orthos. And Mike will grab his bot. Do we have an operator for Jerry? Is Trevor here or ah, somebody else? Yes, he do is. It? He just we just caught him off guard. So here comes Trevor Dunt, builder of Jerry. Mike Dvorsky from Peoria will run Orthos. All right. Place the bots, gentlemen. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Two dramatic scoops. Uh oh, scoop versus scoop. Yeah. Jerry and is off the board. In that case, Orthos scooped somehow had a little, I don't understand quite what happened, but Orthos kept charging ahead, even though yeah. his scoop was on top of Jerry's scoop. I don't understand that quite, but he All had a right. lot of push. Yep, I'm waiting. 
but you call the orthos. Okay, three, two, one, go. Uh -oh. Uh oh, was that just an out of push? I think we do over on that. That I think the start button on Orthos didn't get pushed. But let's just do a do over. Give it another try. Ah, yeah, you're right. He was spinning and didn't see him. I think maybe it depends on. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> There we go. This is different. Now Jerry's scoop is on top, and it's a pushing match. And Jerry pushes really well, and Orthos does quite well, too. Orthos is gaining, losing ground a little. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Jerry is off. A slight shift in there. Yep. Configuration suddenly Jerry maybe lost pushing power. Maybe a weight difference when he got up underneath him. And a the angle, the angle yep. changed. So we give the second Yuko to Orthos and we give the match to Orthos. And we say goodbye to Jerry. But Trevor, that was a very good run. Yes. For Jerry. Next up is so Hal and Crystal. Hal and Crystal. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Head to head. Oh, Crystal's got a little advantage. Hal has done that several times. Right on the edge, stops. And Hal with the advantage. Okay, Yuko to Hal. I am noticing, I just have to comment, the last time I saw Crystal compete, Crystal had small wheels. Is that right? Okay, because there was that other vehicle. I, I'll, I'll talk to you about that later then, Chrissy. I was noticing, I thought you had... Okay. All right. Yeah, Colton's robot has a scoop on the back as well as the front. It does, yes. Maybe that might help him on the edge. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. So I've seen Hal several times now get backed up to the edge and it just stops. Like ah. that. Ah, I think Hal touched off on the side. He's definitely off now, but definitely if you touch now. the, f you don't have to touch the floor. You, if you touch on the vertical side of the arena, that's also being out. And I think that right there would have. So we have one Yuko each. Right, one Yuko each. So I think in this case, that rear scoop might not be a, an advantage if you come to the edge. We'll have to be watching that. We might have missed that in previous events, Keith. Okay, I'll be watching closer for that. Here, go ahead and place them. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Al's backing up to the edge. I think he touched the edge right there. And he's off anyway again. Yeah. So, yep. Hal is done there. All right. The wind so goes to Crystal. A, it's a, a Yuko and the match to Crystal by Chrissy Nielsen. All right. That ends our th round three. Round three is done. We move now to round four, winner's bracket, with Zoom In and Ghost. Zooming in Ghost up next. <clears throat> 
So these are two robots, neither of which has yet lost a match. Right. We, this is the <coughs> winner's bracket so far. Okay, and here we go. Three, two, one, go. Um, yeah, I don't think you did. Let's start that one over. We didn't get a good push on that one. Okay, let's try it again. Three, two, one, go. Uh -oh. the, the switch, the starting switch on Ghost is very tiny. Yeah. And it's a little bit hard. And Ghost and El Matador slide in opposite directions to oh. start. So it's a little bit tricky. Okay, we'll try it again. Ready? Three, two, one, go. There we go. Uh-oh. Ghost I, stall? Yeah, I think that Ghost may have died. Oh, he started again. Started and lost a wheel. No, I, I do not understand that one, but it did happen. So the Yuko, the Yuko goes to Zuman. Quick little repair if we can. So on that last round there, Ghost did lose a wheel. We're taking a look at it now, see what they can do to fix Ghost. Uh, Alan Sines is from Los Alamos, New Mexico. They're taking a look at it, Alan, if you're watching on online. Hopefully we can get Ghost going again. What's the status there? Definitely a, a, a technical problem with Ghost. The wheel detached and it doesn't just snap back on. Mm. So, I, unless our technical assistants that are working on this can debug the problem, a lot of people helping, and I can't immediately contact the builder. Um, I think we're going to give this a minute. And if it's not solved in a minute, we're going to start with the next event. Sounds good. <clears throat> it's unfortunate. He's been doing very well up till now. I'll be looking for any email that Alan Signs might okay. send. Uh, Nathan has sent a couple of messages, and uh, actually, Nathan Burnside and Alan Sines are watching the competition, I think maybe together. <laughs> uh, so I got a note from Alan. Nathan, Apollo, there's an intermittent connection, okay, or enough ambient infrared. So too much ambient can disable my bots. And we've got a bit of light. We might notice if Apollo swings over toward that window, mm. which sometimes we've had covered with a curtain. It's not yeah. a bright, sunny day. No, it's not. But there is some light over there. And then now, however, the wheel falling off, we don't have a communication. That one is the problem at the moment, part of the yeah. problem. There was a problem stopping on the arena for a moment. So um, there's no so fixing it there, guys? No. Put black tape over the IR command sensor if it's th it seems to stop again on the arena. So we'll try to, we'll try to be alert for that. That's Apollo. That's and this is Ghost. So we're looking for a message from Alan Sines if he has anything to help us out on... Maybe next year we can use chat instead of email. That's well, a little it's faster. A new, I, we, we have fantasized, if you might, you might say, about how to strengthen the link and whether there should be a strong real-time link with builders. Yeah. We're sort of getting there now for the sure. first time. We're starting in that direction. Well, and the fact that we're streaming this with Zoom, they could actually participate, you know, as a video conference. Mm -hmm. So okay. 
but we'll work on that. But right now, Alan, here we go. Uh, okay, Alan says, from this at, for, for this situation, let's just continue on with the other robots. Okay. So I'll go back and I'll give the Yuko. So zoom in would be the winner then. The Yuko to zoom in. In this case, yeah, and we are ready to move forward. Okay, so zoom and moves on. Next round is Artemis and Seamus. Artemis and Seamus. Okay, go ahead and place the bots, guys. And here we go. Three, two, one, go. Whoa! <laughs> there, uh, there the good programming of Ron Pepnier was, was of little avail. The sheer power of Artemis one out. Definitely give that to Artemis. Who Yuko Artemis. That collision uh, forced a few things to come off, mostly uh, the labeling. The founder was interested in having a, a competition between intelligence versus mechanical improvements, programming versus mm -hmm. mechanical, and see which was more significant. Uh -huh. There was a little test. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, yeah. power one out. Yeah, <clears throat> Artemis is low, got right underneath, pushed Seamus right out. So, round and match to Artemis. Artemis receives the match, and we are proceeding. That's the end of round four in the winner bracket. Now we're going down to the ones that have lost once. This one would be Danny and Mystery. Danny and Mystery. <coughs> yeah, Mystery being the new robot, by my memory. Danny was built by Riley Morgan. Okay. <coughs> Mystery was built by Ethan Hunter. Okay, go ahead and bow and place your bots. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Oh, Mystery gets under Danny, flips Danny right out of the ring. You call Mystery. Okay, go ahead and place the bots. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Same result. Different part of the ring. Mystery with the Yuko. Yuko mystery. Round and match. And to with mystery by Ethan Hunter. And we say goodbye to Danny. And I think you're right. Danny, Riley, thank you very much. Riley got up early in the morning to make sure her robot was going to be here. Next I we have El Matador and Wally. El Matador and Wally. This is Alan's low fast. So El Matador is still, Alan Sign still has one completely functional robot in the competition. And El Matador was the winner last year. Yep. And for a moment we thought El Matador was disabled, but yep. turns out not. Not quite yet. So this is a local bot, Wally versus a ship in. <coughs> Go ahead and place <laughs> your bots, guys. 
And here we go. Three, two, one, go. The flags go up. Oh, yeah. Wally can't take that one. Wally has good pushing power, but yeah. Almodador has even better. Yuko to Almodador. Okay. Here we go again. Ready? Three, two, one, go. See if Wally can maybe get around. Oh, nope. A matador takes it to Wally there. Well, that was a, almost a perfect, identical replay of the previous yep. round. And Yuko, oh, that one is. <laughs> well, that's interesting. We've lo I've lost control. Oh, I went into the negative range. Yeah, yeah. All right. There we go. So two Yukos to my touchpads fighting me a little bit to Almodator match round I'm sorry match to Almodator and we're good to go okay next up is Bird and Orthos Bird and Orthos I think they no they have not met before that was that was Jerry and Orthos yep. that met before. Now Bird, but also with a projectile, you might say. A big scoop or a <laughs> lance versus the lance. <laughs> they both start upright. Lance pointing upward. The entire robot bot, Orthos pointing upward. It's a bit difficult sometimes to get orthos balanced. I've operated orthos, and you have to seek the equilibrium. Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Uh-oh. We got out of there okay. Maybe there we go. Yeah. Orthos with the win there. Somehow, Bird got pointing, pointing the wrong direction. <clears throat> So you call to Orthos. Correct. And <coughs> here we go again. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Same result there with Orthos. So second you call to Orthos, match to Orthos. And we say goodbye to Bird. All right. Thank you, Henry. I Good think job. I think that Bird did relatively well. Yes. As part of the student competition. And so now, yeah, go ahead. Uh, expert in Crystal are up next. Expert, Crystal we got a low one versus a high one. Expert is one of the visiting robots that always came with a remote stop. We've had Expert flying through the air <laughs> in previous I remember. competitions. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Ah, the hook move worked yep. for Expert. It came in from almost behind. Okay, here we go again. Three, two, one, go. Let's see if we see that hook move again. Uh, Crystal just turns ah. around. And Expert kept locked on. For a moment, Expert yep. backed off for some reason, but then locked on again. Two Yukos, two Yukos to Expert. And we say goodbye Match to Crystal. to Expert. Yes, and thank you, Chrissy. I thought your Thanks, robot Chrissy. did wonderfully well in this competition. That ends uh, match 37, and we go now to the semifinals. The first semifinal is Zoomin and Artemis. Zoomin and, are we in, we are in, Sh 
match. Semi-final. Yep, number 46. There we go. Yep. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> two low bots. Ooh. Zoom in is off. Yeah, Yuko goes so to Artemis. Yudimo, Ar Yuko to Artemis, who did come in second last year. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Z Zoom and stayed locked on. Yep. Got on the side and stayed locked on. Yep, that goes so. to Zoom in. So we got a one and one. So there, I would think speed might have speed and a good strategy. Just slightly provided the edge. It was close. Yep. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Why? Ooh. So Artemis got himself turned around. I don't know if Artemis has a rear sensor. I don't know. Curious. He sure got turned around at the correct moment. And so it's two, second Yuko and the match to Artemis in a very competitive match. And we progress then. So in the finals, Artemis will appear. And then we go down and we're back into the one, one loss bracket. This is the wrestle back. All right? Yeah. Uh, Mystery and El Matador. And Mystery is a student robot fighting to join the finals. Quite, quite unusual. And Mystery is the new robot entered by Ethan Hunter. It's and here we go. Place your bots. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Where the flags are going. <clears throat> Matador gets that one. So that's El Matador, right? You call to El Matador. Go ahead, place the bots. Here we go. And three, two, one, go. Yeah, it's just fear, <laughs> pure pushing power. So second Yuko to Almodator. Congratulations, Almodator. You are the winner of this match. Mystery will say goodbye to. Yes, and, and thank you, Ethan, for bringing that nice robot. <clears throat> Next, we have Orthos, an expert. Orthos, an expert. Two ship-ins. We have some drivers here, some button pushers for Orthos, an expert. So we're working through the loser's bracket to see which of the robots in that part of the bracket can rejoin the never lost robot, which is Artemis, I believe, yes, waiting for them. Artemis, Artemis is lying in wait. <clears throat> so two, two friends here, Rick Brooks and Mike Dvorsky, both members of the Central Illinois Robotics Club have their robots competing for the honor of going forward. I can't, I can't see you, Mike, so you have to tell me when you're ready. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, hold on. We'll try it again. Okay. Uh, this is that challenging start by Orthos. Ready? Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> Uh, Ooh. Orthos went out on that. I have, to, I have to repeat a statement by Rick Brooks at this time. He commented to me once, I've been pounding on Mike Dvorsky's robot for years. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? 
Ready? Three, two, one, go. Ah, uh, no. there the edge went to expert. Yes. Mike, I believe last year at your competition, you beat expert. He did? I don't know how I did it, but this time <laughs> he beat you. Okay. There's a real grudge match kind of thing, right? Iowa State versus Iowa. And that, that kind of competition. So let me get this right, though. This is expert with two Yukos. Expert wins that match. Correct. And expert moves forward. Correct. <coughs> okay, that brings us to the one loss now, round six. That wasn't what I wanted. Here we go. I think we're on number 44, is that right? I'm looking. Do you? Yep, we gotta yep. do 44, Sheamus, 43. Seamus. Right. Seamus and El Matador. Okay. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Place the bots. And ready, three, two, one, go. Seamus and El Matador, two very different bots. And Seamus gets pushed out. El Matador with the Yuko. <coughs> so we've made programming and improvements this year for our student robots. We're gonna have to work on speed next. Right. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Yep. Same. So there we go. Second Yuko to El Matador. The match to El Matador. Ron, thank you very much for your wonderful robot. It really was a contribution to, the, to, to our course. Next up is Ghost and Expert. <clears throat> Ghost and expert. We should comment that Seamus was the student robot that advanced furthest in this competition. He would be the winner of the student competition. That's a very good. Congratulations, note that Ron, for making yeah. it to the, that far. Uh, we need oh, ghost yes. and expert. <clears throat> Oh, that's right. Ghost All right, so is it's out. A buy. That's a buy. Ghost is out. And so, yeah. I'm then sorry? Expert and El Matador, if I'm reading oh, this correctly. Oh, okay. Just a second, though. Let me get yep. this one taken care of. Well, so, Expert gets the buy. Two Yukos to Expert. Match to Expert. And we're ready. Looks <laughs> right. El Matador and Expert. So these are the final two robots. The winner of this will go to the final. Um, no, there's one oh, more. Oh, there's one more. Yep. There is one more. That's right. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> two low, fast robots and El Matador. Yeah, a little bit more pushing power. Yeah, pretty strong. The robots... El Matador and Artemis have very strong motors. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. Yep. Same deal. So I think. No. Right. Yep. Expert is not. I, I would point out. El Matador out one, right? El Matador won. So the El Matador gets the match. Yep. And so El Matador does go again against Zuman. Rick Brooks has pointed out there's a lot of strategy in sumo robotics in terms of robotics in terms of how one places the robot and not being here, he can't do that placement. So he has to rely on 
previous programming, and so that's a slight disadvantage. Sure. But in this case, they were both remotely programmed, so. Yep. Yeah, okay. So, so maybe, zoom, zoom on an El Matador. Maybe next year if we do the video conferencing, you could uh, tell us where to place it. If we do, yeah, if we do real time, yeah. he might give us some tips. Yeah. <coughs> okay, here we go. Ready, three, two, one, <coughs> go. <coughs> <coughs> And Matador gets the advantage there. Two fast, low-profile robots. You go El Matador. And three, two, one, go. And El Matador got squared up. Yep. So second Yuko and match to El Matador. And Mike, thank you very much. I think now we are ready to enter the finals. I believe so. So it looks like Artemis and El Matador. And here it can happen if El Matador would win, I believe, then we would, if Artemis would lose, we'd have to have a second match because Artemis has never lost and you have to lose twice to right. be the overall winner. This is a double elimination, <coughs> so. Okay, here we go, three, two, one, go. But potentially our last round, this could be determine the winner. Now Matador is out of there. So that's a Yuko Artemis. If Artemis wins here, wins it all, right? I believe so. Yep, that's here right. we go. So that'd be El Matador's second loss. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> Ah. Oh, I couldn't tell. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just noting that uh, Artemis got a slightly late start, but still managed to win out. Um, I thought, but I don't want to say. I, I thought because he r raced across the arena and pushed El Matador backwards, but he maybe spun off the way to the they side. Yeah, the way they came off not, the we're, ring. It we're not doing our instant replays. Unfortunately, no, not this year. Okay. Should we do that over? Do you want to do that as a do-over? Then this time we're going to be watching a little Let's bit. Let's watch real close. Closely. We lost our focus a bit, I think. Uh, I saw them, but they were so close coming off. It, it was just difficult. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one, <clears throat> go. It was really, really close. Whoa! And that one, go, that one goes to El Matador because yep. Artemis raced across the so, line. So very we have a quickly. one in one situation here. So it's Yuko to El Matador. They both raced off the arena. That, that's noteworthy, I think, for those builders. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Three, two, <coughs> one, go. If Artemis wins, we're done. If El Matador wins, we go one more round. Oh, that one goes to El Matador. So now we do another yep. entire match. So Yuko El, Mat El Matador, yep. match to El Matador. Hold on, guys. We're going to let the bracket update. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. That goes to Artemis. Getting beat up a little bit there. <laughs> Here we go again. Three, two, one, go. If Artemis wins, we are done. And Artemis takes that one. So All the right. So the, the decision has been made. The overall winner is Artemis, 
and we might be able to look at the standings quickly. Then we would see, um, I think we can end the tournament and then look at the standings. So let's just do that. Then we're going to go to the standings. And here we have a summary of, a summary of how the competition went. Nice. I think this match is the year before last when, an, uh, when the robot built by Nathan Burnside from Los Alamos came in first and his friend Alan Science came in second. So we're back to two years ago. Last year they, they reversed and Alan's robot came out on top. And then last year a Mike Dvorsky robot came in third. That was Newman. This year a Mike Dvorsky robot comes in third. I'm sorry, that was Newman, yes, and then this year Zuman. <laughs> Zuman and Newman. Zuman comes in, and then Expert has moved up this year from fifth place to fourth place, and yep. Ghost comes in fifth. I, that's my memory. I'm not. I can't guarantee. And El Matador. Seamus was the top student robot at number six. So El, that's it. And El many Matador other really fought there. Look at all those wins after El Matador. Really fought back. Yeah, that was a, a very close outcome. Yeah. So thank you to everyone. I don't want to name anyone specific. It's been a really a wonderful Yeah, we said a lot of thank yous at the beginning. We like to thank everyone for coming and thank all the contestants. They had great robots. Yes, and I guess we can wind this up. Tech crew. All right. Everybody, have done. a great day. Thanks for coming. <laughs>